back to another episode of Stitch Method. Today, we're going to do an In the Mind of Clapton, but also, you know, a lesson on how to better your soloing through listening and developing your concepts. And so with that being said, make sure you share and subscribe and we'll get right down to it. The jam we're going to work on is from Let It Rain, one of my favorite jams. Every time I hear it, it's just my ears perk up. And there's a reason for that. It's an, it's an A mixolydian jam, which means it's in the key of D. It's starting on the five chord, A, going to G, and my ear always loves A mixolydian. It just does. And so every time I hear it, it, it just puts me in a good mood. I was shopping yesterday, I heard it, and I said, we're doing the video. <laughs> so uh, I have a backing track right now, or a little loop of the ending jam section. I'll play it so you can understand what we're working with, and then we'll talk about it. It's A, G, and G. So simple and so tasty. And so what we have here is we have an Amix Lydian Jam, and uh, I'm creating a playlist linked below in the description box of all the pertinent Stitch Method videos that go with this lesson. So, uh, you know, I have a lot of, of videos about soloing a Mixolydian and all these concepts, so this playlist will be always kind of like group cluster related videos you can kind of like catch up on or sharpen your skills. All right, so since we have an A mixolydian progression, and we're starting on the A in the in the key of D, uh, we have several options uh, to solo with. And this lesson is going to go beyond the scales. It's going to go on to what to do, but we're going to start with our scale options. So what we have here is our scale options pretty much, which Clapton uses perfectly, are the A major pentatonic, the A minor pentatonic, and the A mixolydian scale. We'll talk about all those and get your fingers on it. But what he does with them is I think the miss or uh, what people don't realize is happening and if you can catch on to this it's going to make your solos so much better and give you a boost of confidence. So let me show you what we're doing. We're going to stick right now up way up on this 14th fret with the A major pentatonic, all right? And we're going to play it just so you have it. All right, A major. And so what he's doing, to make a long story short, the catch, the, the, the thing you want to start practicing first is ending on an A or an A chord tone when the second A comes around. I like this, like A, G, G, and here, right there. You really want to listen for that moment. And on that moment, you're going to hear Clapton hit an A or an A or an A or an A chord tone, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's go over those uh, the A's by themselves. It's the 17th fret of the E, the 14th fret of the G, and the 17th fret of the high E here. So I'm going to take a very brief, simple solo uh, with the A major pentatonic, and we'll talk about starting, we'll talk about everything, but ending on this A right here, so you can hear the concept and what you want to listen for. Here we go. So you can see, ending on an A, what it does is it lets you end your phrase with confidence. Now, when you listen to Clapton do this live, you're going to hear him do this. Sometimes he will stop, sometimes he will hit it like perfectly and keep going, and we'll talk about that. But hitting an A or an A chord tone on that second A is the key to giving you the confidence to keep on playing and knowing you have a goal. So let's talk about those A chord tones inside of this. Uh, pentatonic. We have an A chord tone. It's the seven. Oh, sorry, A chord tones or A arpeggios. Uh, it's the 17th fret, uh, the 14th fret. Then nope, don't listen to me. 17th fret, 16th fret of the A, 14, 14, 14, 17, 17. You can watch my free caged masterclass if you need to catch up on that stuff. So any one of these notes are viable chord tones to end your soloing on. We're going to have a little bit of a discussion here. The threes, one, three, five, one, three. Let's just see what it sounds like ending on a three. I hear Clapton do it a lot, and so we're going to stick with the A major pentatonic, and I'm going to take another simple solo and end my phrasing on that major third right here when that second A comes around. Let's take a listen. You can hear 
it works fine. I, when you do it twice in a row, it's like, hmm, but you can hear that it works fine. Let's just talk about the fifth. One, three, five. One, three, five. That's the fifth of the, of the A. Uh, it's an A chord tone. It's an E. So, hey, Stitch, you telling me that I can end all these phrases on an E if I want to? Yeah, any E you want to, you can. Speaking of that, if you want to practice this stuff all over the fretboard and go deeper and understand these concepts so that you can do it all the time, check me out on Patreon, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Here is ending on the five. If I can just find my looper. Here we go. <laughs> Again, when you do it twice in a row, it's like, okay, so you're not gonna do it twice in a row, but they're all viable. So let, let me take a really brief solo right now, about two times around like I usually do, but ending on different notes, whether it's a one, whether it's a three, or whether it's a five on that second G, here we go. <laughs> See, it works fine. So now, let's go a little bit deeper. The, the biggest concept is listening for that chord progression and hearing when that second A comes about. That is your comfort level. That's your, um, uh, that, that's where you can stop. That's where you, it's like a buffer. You can kind of like, boom, hit it and be like, okay, cool, and keep going. <laughs> Bad analogy. So now, let's see how he dresses this up a little. Well, we're gonna go to our next scale, which is the A mixolydian scale. Uh, for those of you who you know might know it, don't know it, it's, it, the A mixolydian scale is just a D major scale starting on the A. So let me show you that D major scale completely right on top of where our uh, form one pentatonic was. We have 14, 15, 17, 14, 16, 17, excuse me, 14, 16, 17, 14, 16, 14, 15, 17, 14, 15, 17, 14, 15, 17. We just have a couple extra notes, right, right here, you know, pretty much. And I'm going to take another solo, I'm going to end on my chord tones, but I'm going to bring in some of these notes for flavor. It is up to you to realize, okay, do I want to litter this with mixolydian sounds, or do I just want to sprinkle it in? The more you do this, the more you will have, a, you know, a sense of what you like. There is no right, there is no wrong, it is you. And so, <laughs> I don't know if that's, that was motivational or, or not, but anyway, so here we go. Here's a little bit of mixolydian. If you listen to Clapton, you'll hear him do it live. He'll sprinkle the stuff in. We're going to talk about a lot, actually. There's a lot to talk about. So the Mixolydian, it works. Again, on my Patreon, I'll show you how to do this all over and show you some of the moves that, that Clapton does. Nothing different, just in different places, right? So let's talk about the A minor pentatonic. Clapton does a smooth, smooth move that you want to steal. You want to steal this, all right? And it's, it's how he goes from the major uh, vibe to the, the minor vibe. And so in his mind, we're going to go all the way up to the 17th fret on the high E string. This is an E. Oh, sorry, don't listen. This is an A. And if you've watched any of my, my major pentatonic stuff, you always hear how this is a root note on my channel. This is a major second. And you usually can bend this. Actually, you always can bend this major second up to a major third. And Clapton is no different. You'll hear him do this. And then right here, if you look, here's your A minor pentatonic. And you'll hear him. Kind of dig in on that flat seven of the minor pentatonic, and then kind of hit the A on an A. All right, and so in a minor pentatonic, by the way, we have a root note, the one, we have a minor third, which you don't want to end on necessarily. You can use it in your soloing. Uh, you can check my blues primer playlist, all right? But you can end on the one, you can also end on the five. So he'll switch from major to minor in this very smooth move. Let me see if I can nail it down for you and show you. Now, 
There it was, right? In Clapton fashion, getting that fast little type thing in there. Now, hopefully you're enjoying this. Hopefully you're kind of learning the different moves and you can solo over this. But I, I did something that I want to bring up, which Clapton does. I said how important it was to kind of, you know, make sure you're focusing on the second A because most of his phrasing will, you know, end on a second A. But if you noticed, I kind of ran over my time when I did that line there. And so Clapton, if you listen, does these like extended kind of like triplets or thematic movements, you know, some like this, like on the A major or this in the minor. I might do some like on the mixolydian. But when you repeat or do these triplets, it's okay to kind of like run over that second A and then when the A when the A comes around again, just hit an A chord tone. So let me let me show you what I mean by that. Hopefully this is making sense. It, it's okay to run over when you're doing this, like really. And kind of like hit the A on the not the second time around, but I guess the third time around. So let me let me show you what I mean. And and this is like a little it creates some tension, creates some movement, and it creates like a good like punch when you do it right. Let's see. twice where I kind of like just kept going with it and then when the A, I went over my cue but when the A came around kind of like punched it, all right? How could I forget? I wanted to show you the real reason I wanted to teach this lesson. All this stuff I hope you're enjoying but let me show you what I think is like the creme de la creme. When you're starting, you know, I, I always, I, I start in this video a lot on that major second bent up to the major third. And that is a chord tone, that's the two bent to the three. Starting now, starting on your chord tones is really important if you wanna create movement in your solo. Remember, ending on a chord tone helps solidify what you just did, gives you confidence to discover and move, right? Choosing different scales is gonna give, give you different flavor, but starting on different chord tones is gonna to help you climb the tension mountain and give the audience a really cool vibe. So let me show you what I mean. Now I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start uh, on this root note here. And then when I when I start again, I'm gonna try and start on, let's see, uh, this root note here. Not root note, this chord tone, this is an E. Then the next time around, I'm gonna start on this root note here. And then, let, let's just, let me show you what I mean by that. You, you'll hear it. If you can just slowly climb your starts up to your next chord tone, it gives a great effect. <laughs> And so a little flub there, but you can get the idea. Just starting on a chord tone, playing your riff, then ending on an A, and then climbing up to another chord tone, starting your riff, ending on another chord tone, and then starting on a higher chord tone really gets the whole song moving. I'll do it one more time. Hopefully I'm making myself clear. I'm, I'm sitting listening to myself going like, nope, not clear. But let me just show it to you so you can hear it one more time, all right? Look for this note starting and any chord tone ending. Then starting on this note, and then any chord tone ending, then starting on this note, and listen to that movement. It's really wonderful when you do it right. It really is. Can't believe I just said wonderful. Here we go. Thanks, Scott. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.